This is blunt cut metal work. Today I'm going to test uh, this blade. Uh, I'm supposed to test the chop, big chopper, but uh, I'm going to uh, test with this one first. It's the metal is W2, and with uh, this blade is a uh, uh, one eighth of an inch thick, and um, the Cutting edge bevel is 13 and a half uh, degrees per side. The uh, behind the edge thickness is 14,000 of an inch. And uh, we, are, we are in front of the um, Rockwell hardness tester. Anyway, so this knife start out decent, decent sharp. So I just sold that, and uh, this is a calibration block. Uh, when I bought the machine, it's a 61.9. I'm going to calibrate my tester right now, so you can see. And I'm going to set the dial so that it's going to be 61.9. Okay, so right now it's just a little bit over 60 something. So I changed turn the dial a little bit to be 61.9. Right now it's 61.9. Okay, so that's a calibration block. I mean, this thing shifts a little bit. You can see it's not that center. But if I move it again, let me see if I can read it. Sorry for, it could be kind of boring, but uh, this way that you can see this tester would produce consistent number. The, the reader sometimes, you know, up or you know, plus or minus half a point, sometimes even a point. Anyway, it is. That is way off. So I'm going to reset it down. That is the one, point, one, point nine. I think pretty much when it dead straight up, I think that uh, probably a pretty good. Test. Okay, so we are about there. And I take the block off. And let's uh, test this uh, the carbon uh, opinion number something like number eight, and it, so that we have point of reference with. So um, I look and I'm going to test where the flat part of this blade is, it's which is near the spine. Okay, here you go. Oops. There it is. Now, usually when you do Rockwell hardness uh, reading, you do multiple times. And, but I test this blade before, so I know what it is. So, it's about 57 or so, and that's what 
usually get anyway. Okay, so I calibrated. The point is, uh, and now this blade. And I'm going to test about right here in this spot where the flat spine is. I get the uh, the reading can be you know, a point off here there but that's okay the point is you're going to see that this play is not normal that you will see sixty is right here fifty sixty is right here seventy is right here so that you can see the reference point. So you can see this closed tour and what is reading if you read straight in is 67.5. And I, I can get a consistent reading like that multiple times. I can move it a little bit here and do it again. Sorry for this boring part. I, in a future video I will skip this one. But sometimes that uh, we need to uh, sort of verify that uh, you know you have a reader and you actually read something. Of course, you know this is my setup, so therefore you know, uh, we don't have any witness or anybody here to uh, can verify this setting. And this one a little bit above 67 and a half. It's you know, 67.75 or something like that. So we call it 67 and a half. Uh, Rockwell Hagner's C scale. All right. I'm going to remove this blade carefully. And this the part that you might get a little uh, disoriented because I'm going to sort of cover up the lens and move out to the test area. I gotta put my finger in front of it. Okay? Sorry. Alright. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just basically chop some uh, wood and uh, I'm walking from my garage to outdoor. And if you see my video before, it's familiar. And let me uh, put it down. Here it is. And that is my test bed. And I'm going to zoom out. Okay. There is this, my chop block. Actually, let me introduce myself. I have a lot of video, but you know, to see I am. Hopefully, I get into the frame. Uh, let me. Take off my glasses. My name is Loom, so I am uh, the uh, founder of Plant Cut Metal Work. Thank you for watching and comments. I want to do video now. All right, so we have uh, stick it on moving around or over. In the future, it will not be boring, but you can. Uh, and I have some glove. So again, uh, is 13 and a half degrees per side because I freehand so it wobble a little bit when I sharpen it. I mean it go between about 12 and a half to 14 or 12 to 14 and things like that. But I get caught 13 and a half to be conservative. 
and the thickness is I calculate and I got the caliper I got multiple caliper and the uh, the uh, toward the more conservative reading is 0.14 Well, this is the chopper, W2 chopper, which is the edge about 65 and a half Rockwell. And I want to test using a little one for us instead of, uh, you know, uh, make a big chip on this uh, bigger blade, which is a much more expensive investment. But to get kind of give a preview, this is uh, a piece of oak. There you go. Anyway, that, that is a but that is a chopper that I'm going to put a handle on and we'll uh, make something out of it. This time we are testing this little guy. Okay, so this is yet uh, Douglas fir dry Douglas fir two by four, and this one doesn't have much mass, so I just kind of wrist flicked it. Kind of pathetic. I do nothing, pretty much. So, and I said, oh, this is dry oak and have a little bit better bite, but still. Mm. Mm. Well, and this is dry olive, and this is much harder. Uh, Jenka Rockwell wise, the oak is about you know, somewhere about 1200, 1300, and the uh, olive, the, this is dry olive with a little knot in there, it's uh, higher. But right now, because we don't have really a lot of mass to really uh, do heavy chopping, you can see uh, I don't trust. Uh, Holding it with my <laughs> finger. Yeah, it's pretty much, you know, all that little thing, pretty much nothing, and of course, pretty light. So, to start out light, at least I, I stop like that with light work, uh, it's not going to already destroy. And then I just go to Say okay, well for the big chopper, the edge of the big chopper and the edge of this thing is similar. So now if you encounter something hard, so if it were this is uh, African black wood dry, and if it was get whittling it, right? And uh, I mean, it's just not much right now. So and this is, uh, let me look at. Not a piece of uh, bone here. Okay, this is more round and tough. This is uh, pork rib bone. And I just clean up the meat. So on the uh, marrow soft part, I mean, if I were going to press cut that to it, it's, uh, it's not much of a a challenge for this guy. I will collect these things so animal don't try to eat it. And now I mean okay, so now in between a chopper can probably go through this. And so but I would have to chop so therefore you create some impact. I'm gonna chop on the soft end first and then uh we chop on the hard end. The soft end is the way the marrow this soft end right here. That you can see that the uh, bony part and uh, nothing. And now I'm going to chop the harder end, this end right here.
All right. Sometimes you get excited and you can go nutty on it. And I cannot really feel anything uh, really. Uh, well, I didn't bring out the, the newspaper, I mean the uh, form book paper. But you can probably try to look down and see any fly reflecting. I don't think you're going to see anything. Because I don't see anything. Okay, so with that, and then I say, okay, well, let's uh, try something. Uh, a little bit. I think I get rid of my glove. Okay, let's get baton to something real quick. Easy wood, batoning, and then harder wood after that. Sorry, this is slow pace. I haven't made video for a few months, so. Next one will be improved quicker. When I baton to, I mean, I don't try to split the wood. I try to go across grain, and that was more of the point. Uh, it's a lot more difficult work. And so, like I said, this. And you go down like this. And. Oh, yeah. Now, my favorite uh, trick is well, seeing I don't have mass, but this, uh, this piece here is have a lot more mass. So, it will receive reverse chop. Okay. <laughs> hmm. Wow, that's beautiful. All right, let's take a look in that data. Well, if you would say a chop, a chop to, to I mean, wedge to this uh, oak here, it's Deep, deep. So not bad. And well, I I chop here. I mean, and the uh, when the thing fly up, uh, it hit concrete here. So uh, ignore that up here. But along here, you don't see anything. That could be a damage. Let me go and get that uh, phone book paper real quick. Sorry. We'll try to be more organized next time. Okay, so this is the part here. I didn't bounce the blade and hit concrete. Okay. So, so far that all this little work didn't, and the edge have no damage. You don't see it caught or anything. And so, and this wood is the one, I mean, this is the olive with a little knot like this. This is the one that uh, break a lot of my, uh, my blade. This kind of wood and this simple looking guy, but when you put baton to them, it's a blade killer. So either either it went through, no problem. Okay, no problem. How can you tell? No problem mean I, I avoided the front because that one hit concrete when it flew out. So baton to that and let baton to the bone. These bones seem to be a lot easier. I think I need a harder bone. Sad. I guess I don't make pig as tough as they used to, huh? A raised pig. These are high growth. So all right, let that clean up the edge a tiny bit before I try to slice. 
I mean, bone still. I mean, it's hard. So, so I just want to see whether or not I sh suffer for any damage or not. Smooth. So, okay. I tried to be cool. I said, "Oh, stuck." Didn't. Anyway, uh, so with this 67 and a half Rockwell, now I have confidence to take this heavier blade and uh, and go through some harder wood than just two by four, like uh, this. Kind of tough looking things. Well, I will make a handle. I will test this one fully later. All right. Well, nothing happened to it either. All right. Well, thanks for watching.